name? Stephen Montahani. <clears throat> My name is Carmen Montahani. And does your name have any cultural significance? No, it doesn't. I'm named after my mom named Carmen. And then how would you guys describe your culture? <clears throat> Heavily influenced by the American culture. And then what about like your Mexican side? Uh, it was very traditional um, when we visited uh, our family. And then mom? Ours was, I guess, kind of both. But my parents and grandparents spoke Spanish when we were growing up. <clears throat> And we had family in Ensenada that we would always go visit there. And so we, we lived the Mexican culture as well. What's one of your favorite culture traditions that you guys did either growing up or now? Listening to my grandfather <clears throat> play the guitar and him and my grandmother would sing Mexican songs at all our parties or just if we were just at home hanging out. Mine was the food. Um, my grandparents um, made the homemade tortillas, the chicken and mole, so all the traditional Mexican foods, and that's what I really liked. What's one tradition that you guys did when you were younger that you wish you would have done now? So with our family, um, a lot of the recipes that the grandparents made, made it to the next generation, but they skipped my generation. So all those traditional meals that uh, um, the family made um, did not carry on. And one of those would be like making homemade tortillas. Same with me. And what was your favorite um, food that your um, mother and father made when you guys were growing up? Well, for me, my, my mom made the best uh, hamburgers on toast. So that was one of my favorites. I was a very picky eater, so Mexican food really didn't. Um, uh, tastes good to me, so it's more Americano. Hamburgers and hot dogs. Mine was my mom's enchiladas, rice and beans. Was your guys' grandparents connected to um, their culture as well? My family was very connected to the Mexican culture, you know, with the Mexican music, Mexican food, the upbringing, um, same as my dad's side, mus music, um, food, celebrations, yeah, heavily um, culture, Mexican culture. My grandmother would actually make homemade uh, piñatas for our birthday parties oh. when we were growing up. She used to make empanadas and buñuelos, <clears throat> homemade tortillas. <clears throat> but my mom never carried on that recipe, the recipe. So that's one thing that <clears throat> we all regret, that we can't carry on her, yeah. her cooking. Ask what was one favorite mariachi song um, that you guys had playing at your wedding? My best man, he was a mariachi player. He played an, um, an instrument. He presented us with a mariachi song um, that he, he actually explained in detail what the meaning behind the words were. And the name of the song was... La Silencio de la Noche. We had mariachis at our wedding and he actually played with them. What I remember of it is, it's about um, a young couple coming together and they weren't very like expressive in their relationship, sharing a whole lot of deals. They're very private um, and with their love, which was kind of how me and mom were um, too. And so that's what I remember of it. How did it make you feel in the moment? I thought it was awesome. It kind of, it kind of told our story and us not really realizing it until our best man, which is our brother-in-law, had explained what it meant at our wedding. And then he made us a big frame and it had the actual notes of how to play it. Now that you listen back to it, how does it make you feel reminiscing on that feeling? For me, it kind of like solidified the prominence of it, like how big it was, because we thought it was great at the time, you know, because there was a lot going on that night. But when you go back and reflect, it's like, wow, that was, that was a pretty big uh, moment. What's like one, I guess, story or thing that was at your guys' wedding that you haven't told us yet? That we had the best uh, Mexican food. Yeah. People <laughs> still talk about it 26 years later. Do you guys have any other like stories or history you would like to tell? When I was in sixth grade, my my mom, my grandmother, and my two sisters 
<clears throat> we traveled to Magdalena, Mexico in on a bus ride. It was beautiful and I know I know my mom still has those pictures. We took a lot of pictures there. That's cool. Yeah, it was very cool. When I was younger, uh, we went to Mexico too and and uh, I remember driving once we got into TJ, we had driven off to on a, like a dirt road and I remember a bunch of poor kids that lived in cardboard homes, literally cardboard would come running up to the car and my dad would hand them candy and like pennies and stuff like that, which which looked like it meant the world to them, but, uh, and it probably did. But it was just uh, unusual for me to see something mm -hmm. like that. Thank you guys for being in this interview and sharing your guys' story. This will be shown to future generations, so if you want to say hi to your future people. Well, I'm 56. We've been waiting a long time for grandkids. So we're super excited. Can't wait to hold you, raise you, um, teach you some t-ball. <laughs> we're, we're a baseball family. You come from a pretty strong bloodline from uh, Montahanos. You'll hear a lot about that. <laughs> Montahano number one. <laughs>Steve Montahano. I'm Selena Montahano's father. I'm here to share um, some information about my mom uh, and my dad. Unfortunately, at this time, they've both passed um, and are now in heaven. Just some characteristics uh, about my, my dad. Um, he was a very giving father and a, a person in general. He, you know, he himself and my mom, you know, started with very little. They lived in a 10 by 10 shack when they first got married at a very early age, uh, in their teens, honestly. And, and, uh, you know, really were disciplined with uh, their money and, and saved as much as possible and everything to provide us with a really good life. But, um, you know, my dad would do anything for anybody, you know, basically give his shirt off his back to help somebody that was struggling. And, and that was just, something my dad uh, would do. He, he had a lot of care for others. And um, in addition to that, you know, he was the type of person that wanted to raise his sons, um, you know, with uh, 
you know, sternness and discipline to ensure that, you know, we would be productive citizens, you know, so he ensured that, uh, you know, we followed him around as he did uh, work around the house, uh, work on the car, you know, so that we can take that uh, into the future, you know, and be men, productive men in society. My mom, she was the sweetest, uh, most darling um, little lady you'd ever know. She was a stay-at-home mom, you know, she never worked a day in her life and, you know, kudos to my dad for being able to provide uh, for her, for us, you know, all these years and, you know, have a, a pretty good life. Um, but my mom was, uh, you know, she was angelic, you know, she had the biggest heart and would do anything for everybody. She she was a seamstress, you know, um, something she just picked up. She basically made all of our childhood uh, clothing, you know, shirts, shorts. Uh, you know, everything and, uh, you know, no one knew any different. People thought uh, we purchased our clothes from the stores. It was, it was that good. But my mom did the majority of uh, raising us, you know, as my dad worked, uh, she was at home. And so, you know, when we got home from school, she was there to, you know, help us with our homework, feed us and, you know, ensure we're uh, clean and bathed and all that good stuff. But my memories of my mom, she was the most uh, special, um, person, you know, I knew she was super kind, friendly, loving, loved to um, talk with her, uh, other family members, uh, you know, especially the wives, you know, as they kind of like uh, talk back and forth. But um, from characteristics perspective, you know, both of them were just, you know, two peas in a pod. They both uh, love helping others, uh, love their family, and uh, really thrived on that. When it comes to mariachis, you know, they love music. Uh, my dad was more of a Johnny Cash kind of guy, though, and, and my mom kind of just followed along. But, you know, at the family parties when mariachis were played, wow, they just lit up, you know, got super excited, uh, you know, would start dancing, clapping, letting out the big howls and all that good stuff. Um, so they love the traditional uh, mariachi. As a matter of fact, my brother-in-law played mariachi, so they took a special interest in that, um, you know, so they, they really enjoyed that and, um, you know, had a great appreciation for the, the talented musicians that actually played uh, um, mariachi music and the meaning behind, uh, you know, a lot of the words and the songs, you know, really made it special. Um, you know, my dad really loved, uh, or both of them really loved uh, Linda Ronstadt when she kind of switched over and started singing mariachi music, but uh, uh, very fond and uh, really, um, you know, enjoy that type of music throughout their lives. So, you know, with grandma and grandpa, you know, for future generations, um, they really sacrificed um, for us, for you. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier on, they lived in a 10 by 10 shack. There was no electricity and just enough room for a bed. That was it. And uh, they would make, uh, I think my dad made like $7 a week, you know, and so they would, you know, buy some food and, you know, but they made sure that each week they saved a little bit, you know, and uh, over time my dad would get different jobs that paid a little bit more, but they still wanted to save because my dad, you know, grew up extremely poor and didn't want to have that for future generations. So. So they sacrificed and did extremely well over, you know, decades of their life and, you know, created, um, you know, opportunities for us that, you know, not everybody has. And we're, we're grateful uh, for what uh, my mom and dad um, decided earlier, early on to do, which was uh, ensure that they weren't foolish with their money, that they, they valued, um, time spent with each other versus material things, which, you know, we, which I kept, you know, and, and I share with my kids today that, you know, um, the best gift we can give you is uh, our time. And that's true, um, true, um, you know, especially now that uh, my mom and dad have passed and, you know, I don't, uh, you know, have those phone calls or visits, barbecues, uh, those types of things that I could enjoy any longer, um, but what I do have is some amazing memories of my mom and dad and and uh, treasure, you know, the things that we did, you know, over the, over, over their lifetime, our lifetime. Um, so for you future generations, you guys are the legacy of what my mom and dad created. So I hope you have an opportunity to listen to this video, 
cherish what they did because they created a foundation for all of us to thrive, you included. So I hope you take advantage of that and their sacrifice uh, in your life. But God bless you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Carmen Montejano. I'm Selena's mom. And I'll be talking about my dad, Nacho Rubio, who is no longer with us. Some characteristics about my dad is he had a great sense of humor. And anytime you were around him, he would make you laugh. He was a jokester. Um, he also loved his Western shows on TV. And the grad kids uh, learned to appreciate that because when he babysat them, they would have to watch those shows. So they appreciate it now because it reminds them of their grandpa and the time that he would spend with them when he would babysit them. As far as uh, music goes, he was an oldie but goodie lover. He loved his oldie but goodies. He used to play the guitar, play the piano and sing. And he taught me and my sisters how to play the piano, the guitar. Um, and we would sing with him. Um, but he did have an appreciation for mariachi music because um, it's part of his culture. What I want the future generations to know about Grandpa Nacho is that he was very friendly and if you knew him, you were automatically a friend. And when he lived in La Mesa, California, he had his favorite spots to go to to eat or just hang out and um, everybody knew him. And when he passed away, he had uh, flowers sent from his favorite restaurant. He had yum yum donuts that brought, that was his favorite place to get donuts. He would, they brought donuts to his uh, viewing. Um, he had his favorite taco shop um, that was named Nacho's Taco Shop. And they gave him a hat, cap to wear. And so he was well known in the La Mesa community and he only lived there for not even four years. So he definitely left a legacy. And that was one thing about my dad is um, if you knew him, you loved him.